Got Mo action on the way from Les Houndstein Arena tonight with Clear Four coasting the Galleon Tigers, each hoping to chalk up their first conference victory here on the young season. It's live in Free Boys High School Hoops taking you into the weekend, and you can only find it right here on the OH Report. Streaming live and free wherever internet can be found, and it's all on the way next.
things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Moak Rivals, Clear Fork and Galleon are all laced up and ready for hoops action as we welcome you inside the Coke Corral for the Mechanics Bank pregame. Alongside the one, the only, the official Hayden Gray. My name is Brian Skaronski and it's going to be a fun night of basketball action here tonight, Hayden. Um, I don't think we really expect either of these teams necessarily to compete for a Moak championship. However, I think it's crucial for both squads here to get some early season confidence and just play well. And of course, a win's always nice. Yeah, you know, I don't think that either of these teams might be that team that you look at to, oh, they're definitely coming home with a title this year. But, you know, I think it's safe to say both programs doing some big things here during the off season, getting better, and it will be exciting uh, to see a couple conference rivals go at it. Let's talk first about the Galleon Tigers. Their first two games of the season were at home. So this is the first road test for them. They did sweep the Colts last season, Hayden, so they're looking to score the first leg of that again here tonight on the road. Yeah, they want to come in and, and do the same thing they were able to do last season, like you said, 2-0 against Clear Fork, and they want to continue to try and dominate uh, this matchup between the two teams. Uh, Ryan Stover is their head coach. Obviously, they dropped their first MOAC game this season, but looking to bounce back, pick up that first conference win tonight. Speaking of that first loss, let's check out Galleon up to this point on the season. They did knock off Upper Sandusky in their opener before falling to Marion Harding. A bit of a head-scratching game. I think Galleon went in there thinking that they had what it took to get it done. So far, the defense giving up almost 68 per game. That number's got to improve, but I do like offensively putting up almost 65, hey? Yeah, they, they have a lot of offense with a couple of kids that we'll take a look at, uh, you know, in uh, Kent and Eliza Chafin, but I know Coach Stover said the key this year is going to be figuring out how they can stop opposing offenses, how they can play defensively, so we'll see if they're able to work on that tonight. Let's go into our first player spotlight. You mentioned Cooper Kent, one of the top scorers in the league for a team that's putting up those 65 points per game, as I mentioned, and this dude, a pretty healthy chunk of them, one of the best there is in the MOAC. Yeah, this kid absolutely exploded last year as a sophomore, one of the top scorers in the league towards the end of the season, and doing the same thing here so far, third in the league, as you mentioned, and he's a big reason why, uh, you know, offensively they're able to put teams on their heels and get out in transition and get some quick points. And we gave you a little sneak peek at Elijah Chafin and what he's been doing so far this season. 
He's excellent at jumping the passing lanes. He's not just a scorer. This is a guy that can definitely flip the script, turn some D into some O, cash him in at the other end. Yeah, and, you know, he transferred over from Mount Gilead where he attended last season, so uh, played football there, but now on the basketball court for the Tigers. And, you know, another exciting piece to this offense, him matched up with Cooper Kent has been an amazing one-two punch, and I, I know they're going to look to continue that as the season progresses. So for Galleon, looking to get their first win in the league tonight. For Clear Fork, it had been a long time before they had won a game. Let's take a quick trip down memory lane. Do you remember how old you were back on February 19th of 21? I mean, it wasn't that long ago, <laughs> but hey, a lot's changed. A winless season last year for the Colts, but they got one on Monday, their first since this game right here. Can you believe that? No, it's wild. You know, they took down Edison, as you alluded to, on Monday, but that was the last time in this gym. So the 25-game streak's over, and that burden on their mind is now gone. As mentioned, winless all of last year. They ended a 27-game skid on Monday with that dub over the Chargers and a big chance here tonight to continue to build Hayden as I can quote the great coach from the movie Major League. Okay, we won last time. If we win today, they call that a winning streak. Yeah, and when I looked at their score too, Madison's another team over in the OCC that's been really impressive this season. So not too bad of a gap there in that, that first game of the season, a 12-point loss. Obviously, River Valley is expected to be up there towards the top of the league with Shelby. So a tough loss there, but that big win over Edison, what that can do for them mentally uh, is a big you know, barricade they have now surpassed. And I know that the culture is changing here. Head coach Tim Brafford in his first season here with the Colts, looking to collect his first conference victory here tonight and already doing better than the pace from a season ago, 21-22, one that they definitely, they, they just want to put behind them. If, if memory serves, it's the only time that they have gone winless during a campaign in the long history of this program. So off to a decent start. And they've got a couple of kids that we're going to spotlight here tonight that I think can get it done for them, including... Grant Spencer, the only junior in the starting lineup. This kid's pretty smooth with the ball from what I've seen so far. Yeah, you know, he had an exciting first few matchups this season. Scored 15 in that win over Edison, and I believe had 16 when they took on Madison. And I know Coach said that his veteran leadership, even just as a junior, uh, has shined during the offseason, and he's been an important part uh, of why their offense has been able to get going this season. Definitely love seeing him emerge as one of the top scoring threats for the Colts, but it's all about that senior leadership. They've got four 12th graders that are going to be starting here tonight. Powie Alt is one of them, and this is a dude, he just leads by example. That's kind of his style. He's shifty like a hummingbird for sure, like he can dart any which way to any given time, but he just seems like a kid that, like I would liken him to Nick Chubb. He's just going to put in the work, he's going to get it done, and he's going to not talk a lot, just make sure that he sets that example. Yeah, you know, we learned from football season just how well-spoken this guy is. Uh, just a workhorse, puts in the work, and that's why I saw, you know, in an uh, article written by Jake Fur, who we saw this evening, uh, Coach Bradford commended his effort and was the most impressed by him this offseason. So excited to see what he provides as an addition to this year's basketball team. So Powie's going to help lead the charge here tonight for Clear Fork. There he is. Nice JV showing for his baby bro tonight, too. Got a big victory over Galleon, of course. Double figures. And now we're all set up for the varsity action. Everyone's out on the floor awaiting the Star Spangled Banner as we'll step aside here in a moment and honor America with the playing of that. And just want to say congratulations to America bringing home Brittany Grinder today. You see that news? I did see that. That's a big win. So congratulations to the red, white, and blue for making that happen one of the best women's basketball players in the history of the country and looking forward to some great boys high school hoops here tonight inside of the Colt Corral, one of my favorite venues. But now it is time to honor America.
There's just no place quite like the Clear Fork Corral. Always have the band here in the building making sure that they set the tone and get the juices flowing here, hey. So big kudos to them for getting us ready for high school basketball action as it's coming at you live and free right now. So we talked about Clear Fork and the struggles from a season ago, getting a win on Monday to get it done here tonight. Hayden, what does it take? What are your keys to victory? Well, and I think that the most important things tonight for these Galleon Tigers is going to be defense wins championships. As we alluded to, they're still giving up more points than they're averaging on offense. So find a way defensively, get some answers tonight and have that be that next piece that's going to elevate you and then showcase the Galleon grit. Uh, you know, on the football field, we saw all season long, a lot of these kids showing a lot of grit, going through some emotional things in that season and see it translate over to basketball season. Go out there uh, in this hostile environment, as you said, phenomenal uh, road environment to play in, but also tough. So go out there and show some grit tonight. I think you're right, just carrying that mentality here into the building, knowing that you're tough and that you can play that way with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, I think always can lead to some quality things. All right, how about for the home team tonight, Hayden and Clearfork, how do they make it two in a row with a win? Well, I think that Clearfork tonight, what they're going to need to do is use those seniors that you talked about during pregame. Uh, obviously, they've been through quite a few things over their three prior seasons, so allow that to shine and flourish here tonight. And then the Colt comeback, I mean, hey, they just picked up their first win, so we're not going to overreact, but hey, just build upward from there. You finally have that blockade out of your mind. Time to build on top of that win on Monday. Yeah, no question about it. That's all you can do is just try to progress, take that next step, and it all comes with just tasting victories, understanding what it takes to be a successful program. They've done it here. They had those back-to-back -back MOAC championships not that long ago. So I think that this is a team and a community that's definitely always supporting their athletes. If anyone can turn it around in the area, I believe it to be the clear for Colts looking for their second consecutive win here tonight inside of the Colt Corral. Do want to say what's up to everybody who's out there watching on Facebook and YouTube and make sure that you make yourself a part of the game. Drop us comments throughout the night and you will be a part of our fan zone. We love the interactivity. We just want to know how you're taking in the contest, who you're cheering for when something great happens. Just your thoughts overall and we'll include you in tonight's fan zone. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups beginning with the Galleon Tigers coming in on the road here tonight in a fun group out here. You see a couple of smiles, Hayden, mixed in with a couple of kids that are all business. So I like that they have that mismatch of personalities on the squad. Yeah, you know, it's always just a quick second to interact with these guys uh, when we're out there doing this. But you can tell they're a fun group. Uh, took a little bit of time to decide whether they were going to go serious or fun. I think Cooper's is my favorite picture. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, dude's a baller, so he can do whatever he wants in his picture. Excited to see this group on the floor tonight. Yeah, we talked about Kent and Chafin. Those are going to be your backcourt. Uh, well, actually, basically everyone says that they're a backcourt player on yeah. this squad, along with Blue, Fusan, and then along with Hart. And now for Clear Fork. Take a look at their starters for this evening as they start to dim the lights oh. here inside a Les Hounstein gymnasium. Getting the scene set with the likes of Victor Skoog, Powy Alt, Spencer, who we touched on in our player spotlight tonight. They'll be joined on the floor by Mason Pipes and Caden Riddle. This is a fun group. It's a tough group. I think basically all football players out there, so you know that they've got that mentality, that Clear Fork swag, Hayden, that you, if you can translate it over here to the hardwood, just to have that toughness can be so big in this sport. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that go into multi-sport athletes, and I think, uh, you know, most coaches agree in this area. They really enjoy uh, when they have athletes that play in both sports because it just helps translate right into that next season and a lot of things from football can translate well over now you know don't want to be too aggressive a lot more fouls called in basketball but that hard work ethic instilled in them is going to be a nice advantage tonight and I don't think they did this last year where they turned off the lights maybe just for a game but yeah I I mean, when the times weren't going so good, <laughs> maybe Coach Bechtel at the time was just like, you know what, we, we haven't earned the right to turn off the lights for our pregame just yet, so let's pump the brakes on that. But, but I like it. Maybe they need they, – I'm going to mention to Brokaw, they could use some type of a pump-up jam, I think. 
Well, and I remember last season when we did the Shelby versus Clear Fork girls game, I believe the Chicago Bulls theme song is what they used when they mm. shut off the lights. Now, I don't know. I don't remember all the rules to conference games, what you can and can't do. Maybe that played into it, but rules are meant to be broken. I know they are at my household <laughs> with my children. As that is the opening tip, and we are underway. Big thank you to Mechanics Bank for sponsoring our pregame coverage. As we get a three that's off target here to start the contest, and it hit one of the restraints up above the basket, so it's going to be out of bounds over to Clear Fork. Early three-pointer put up from Galleon, so want to come out shooting here, get hot quick. Nowhere to go with the basketball on the cuts. So the Colts working it around. Now here's Scoog looking to attack. Just one dribble. Threads the needle inside. And the layup good from Mason Pipes. Nice pass found by Scoog. And that translated over from the football field where he was dropping dimes right here to the court. So an early 2-0 cushion here for Clear Fork. One for one from the field. Nice spin. Triple team comes. Now another double here for the Colts. A lot of help side defense being offered. As that's up over a double team and off target there from Steven Glue. And we're going to get a blocking foul. As Chafin's going to head to the free throw line. I think this could have went either way. Yeah, a little bit of a scramble there because Clear Fork looked like they were trying to get out in transition, but then had to quickly adjust back to the defensive end. So officials called a blocking foul that time. Rattles the first one home. Chafin, an 89% free throw shooter on the campaign. And that can be a huge plus. You don't see too many consistently great free throw shooters in that number. I know just a few games into the season, but hopefully they'll be able to hold on. Definitely shot by far the most free throws on the team. He's now 18 of 20 for the campaign as Powie tries to drive. A couple of Tigers feel like it maybe went off of his foot. But Clear Fork's going to hang on to the basketball. Got a ton of movement there on the inbounds play. They do get it in. The setup here is the three, and it's a little bit too strong there. Back the other way, Chafin with a quick trigger over the top of the backboard and out of bounds, back over to Clear Fork in front of the student section. Great turnout from them as always, and that's another group you want to commend. I mean, they just played a lot of games here still last season, and that crowd still showed out for them. Deep there from Grant Spencer, the junior, and cork him one from downtown. So Clear Fork. Now with a 5-2 advantage. And I really like what they're doing defensively so far. Sagging off, a lot of help side. And now we get a block, tip there. Pipes was able to get a chunk of it. Racing back the other way. Spencer going to try it again. This time back iron, but the long rebound out to Skoog. And Victor's going to pull it out. And they'll reset now with Powie. Clear Fork with the floor spread right now. Big sophomore trying to dump it inside. Now all quick first step up top. Victor from straight away. And the scoop train finds its home. Time out taken by the Tigers. As Clear Fork off to a six point advantage. Yeah, and the ball movement on that possession was beautiful. Led to Skook having that wide open opportunity. Great team ball getting played here early on. So Clear Fork stampeding out of the gates here. A2 star for them. And you see just a different mentality from this team this year so far. Definitely getting after it defensively. Guys helping each other out, getting in the passing lane. Making life hard so far for the Tigers, who have just two points, almost three minutes here into the contest. 
And you know a lot of that's got to go into, you know, the preparation during the offseason. Always tough to come in and, and try and change a culture to get back to its winning ways. And these guys have totally bought in. You can see it here on display. Here's Albert off the cut. Left hand won't go. Spencer pushing the pace. Looks like he's got the green light from pretty much wherever. I've seen his eyes making contact with the basket. Scoog overshot that one. And the rebound comes off here to Elijah Chafin. Pushing the pace, lobs it up. And he'll connect. Great hang time there from Kent. And it's good for them. That basket going to do a little bit here for their momentum. See one go through the hoop. Chafin able to save it inside. Cooper on the leak out. Switch to the left hand. Missed it. But how about the hoop and the harm? Count it. And he's heading to the free throw line to try to make this just a one-point game. The aggressiveness there, the ability to get the second chance look. Now with a chance to turn it into a three-point play. Got something really cool here tonight, the check-in cam, Hayden. How about this? Got the GoPro set up <laughs> as kids are looking to get into the contest, so you'll see right away who it is. I think that's definitely one of the coolest angles we've been able to set up on our broadcast. So Bo, Bo Dornbrier into the lineup now for the Colts, along with Logan Anderson. Last five points belonging to the Tigers. Clear Fork looking to answer here. Nice ball movement. Now Anderson from the corner gives it up to Powie. Chafin nearly got in there as that one's chucked out of bounds by Spencer. Yeah, miscommunication there. Thought Anderson or Alt might have been cutting back to the corner, but neither of them did. I believe just their first turnover, though, in this contest. Now a quick trigger, other end. Sky enough for a big rebound there was Jackson Hart. And not looking for the basketball was Seth Steger. 6'3 senior had to go right off of the side. And the up and under just off target from Hots. Foul on the floor. This one's going against Kent. Another look, Anderson battling underneath. And the referee on top of it said that he bumped him. Yeah, that was great effort on the second chance look from Anderson who was able to pick up the foul. And that's another thing, this team this year has some depth on their bench because Bradford talked about that too. He said it's hard when you have so many returning Letterman winners. Dornbeer knocks down the open J. Extends the Colts' lead back out to four. Alt's going to be called with the push here. It's going to be the second on Powie, third on Clear Fork. And they're keeping Powie in the game for now. Great setup off the out of bounds play. Gets the look they were trying to find. Chafe and can't convert. So here comes Spencer pushing the pace. Anderson, one dribble, jump stop, and he's headed to the free throw line. Went right at the defender, Quinn Miller. Just so quick there off the dribble. Yeah, I like the play. You know, don't second guess yourself, especially early on in this one. If you want to get some flow going offensively, drive in, be the aggressor. Anderson misses with the first. And now Owie, or Powie will check out. Victor Skoog right back into the contest. And he'll miss both plus step over the line. So an empty trip there to the charity stripe. As Miller looks for directions. Walks it across the timeline. They'll initiate the offense here through the left wing with Stephen Glue. Chafin with the crossover. Left alone. 
Quick step, jump stop in the lane. They got an open shooter from the corner, but it won't fall from Miller. And the struggles continue from behind a three-point line for Galleon. You see there on the check-in cam, Mason Pipes reinserted back into the lineup here with Spencer getting a quick breather. Say what's up to Lawrence out there cheering on Galleon in the comments section. Chris on the Colts side tonight. Austin just wants Let's everyone to get <laughs> after it. <laughs> Let's get it. That's a good comment. Great defense again from Clearforth. They're just hustling around the ball, making it really hard in those passing lanes. Last touched off the Colts, so Tigers will get another chance, but just an extra step ahead, I think, defensively so far tonight for Clare Fork. And I think Caden Riddle was looking over to the referee saying, hey, Orch Report's in the house. Can we get a little <laughs> replay on this to see if I touched that before it went out of bounds? Both referees concurred, and Galleon going to get another stab at it here. And always a tough place to inbound here if you're the visiting team at the Cole Corral, the student section. Does a phenomenal job, of course, of just staying in the ear of the opponents. Yeah, I got to actually meet the uh, big inflatable shark you see in the front row. I guess his name's Ron. Oh. So we'll see if Ron plays a role right now, causing some bad luck for the Tigers at that hoop. Great dish inside. Scoob to Riddle. Two more. And the lead pushed back out to six as we're under two minutes to go here. Opening quarter and a traveling violation against Miller. As Burkholder getting into the mix here for the first time. Another look there on the Spirion Mid-Ohio replay. Soft hands for the big fella. Riddle listed at 6-5. All Ohio went on the football field and deflected there. So here's Galleon coming back the other way. Turning up the tempo a little bit, but Clear Fork gets back defensively. Going to force him to earn it here in the half court where it's been problematic so far for Galleon. Haven't had a ton of success here when they've had to just run through their offensive set. But this time, it'll find its mark. Glue from downtown. Well, and, you know, it's nice for any of these guys to see one fall because there's the misconception. All the offense doesn't have to run through Chafin or Kent. That's just how it's kind of rolled here in the early parts of the season. But there's a lot of guys on this court that can score Glue showing off his skills. Double team comes here. Burkholder has to give it up, and Galleon really getting after it defensively. Someone's got to be open if you're clear fork. But the bump comes in the lane. Be team foul number three against the Tigers. Two more changes here. Clear Fork has gone to their bench and really mixed things up nicely in this opening quarter. Hots and Spencer checking back in, spelling out Anderson along with Dornbeer. Nearly a steal, steal for the Tigers. Looking to trap just about everywhere on the floor. Leaves open Victor Skoog, who pops the kernel from the corner. Great play from him. him in the first quarter last year. You know, just averaged around five points a game, but already was six in the first. Bet it right back at the other end. Chafin matches. Pulling Galleon back within a single possession. See the Tigers going with that zone look, getting out. Really, really healthy pressure out on the perimeter. And the threes just keep flying out here. It's like a wonderland of trifectas. And at first I'm like, you know, what's he, what's he doing? 15 seconds hold for the last shot, but Spencer did have a pretty open look, so can't blame him here early on for pulling the trigger on that one, just no good. As we're down to three seconds, Tigers got to get to work. Down to two. The turn, the shot, and it's actually not even going to get up. Deflected there by Hots, and that takes us to the end of the first quarter with Clear Fork on Sap. 16-13. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. 
We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Second quarter action getting set to begin here inside of the Colt Corral where Clear Fork leads 16-13. And they dominated the defensive glass in that first quarter, 6-3. Hayden Gray on Brian Skoronsky. Good back and forth action going on so far here on this one. Nobody really able to take command. Clear Fork, though, they've led the entire way and now they push their advantage back up to five. Yeah, it's been really tightly contested and exciting to see between two teams who want to make a name for themselves in the conference. Both definitely have the ability to get it done. Galleon, probably the best individual players. Here's one of them, Cooper Gent, and the junior captain. Muscles his way through for two. Really exciting to see the youth that both teams have as well. Clear Fork has a little bit more seniors who play a few more game minutes, but this Galleon team too, a lot of youth. Exciting to see how they're going to just continue to build. This trifecta comes up short from Spencer. Rebound out to Powie. Oh. And he utilizes the elbow for the J. Good job from Powie. He's kind of been that second leading scorer this season. Bit out of control that time for Kent. I think he was just trying to throw it off the glass and hope a teammate was there. But off the interception, three on two. But so smooth to the 10 is Chafin. Great Euro step there from Chafin, showing off his abilities not only as a shooter, but the ability to drive to the rack as well. Colts going inside, kick out. Alt now to the corner here, Spencer. Offensive foul, lowered the shoulder. And Cooper Kent beat him to the spot. We'll see here. Definitely still a little bit of movement, but Gallon going to pick up an opportunity now to go down. And if they want to look for a three, could tie this one back up. Start the offense in the hands of Jackson Hart. See Spencer trying to force Chafin to go left. Wouldn't take the bait dribbling in traffic. That was a tough one to try to pull off there for Hart. Three on two, Anderson to the rack. Looked like he may have lost the handle on his way up and it leads to a foul about 60 feet away from the hoop. Yeah, a lot of speed from Alt, who probably one of the quickest on the team, but Anderson that time just moving a little bit too quick for his own good on the layup. So the foul's going to go against Spencer. It'll be his second. Though it's Galleon who's going to make a quick change. Miller back into the mix. Hart taking a quick seat. Have a conversation with head coach Ryan Stover. Chafin lost his footing and will be called for the travel. Had to work against some contact there, facing pressure from Alt and Spencer, but the traveling violation came first. Off the drive here, scoop shot comes from Garrett Hotz. And the sophomore just basically just bullied his way in to the lane that time. And Hotz is another name. He, he had a big night. I believe led all scores in the game against Edison. He's another guy that Coach Bradford has a lot of faith in, knows that he can be out there and be a difference maker. Another great look there on our check-in cam. See Jacob Powers excited to get onto the floor. 6'5", senior, he'll be joined 
by Kent. Albert takes a seat. So will Seth Steger. And 6'5", you know, I, I, I used to feel tall, Brian, but anymore, I, some of these kids now, I don't know, they're just a different breed. 6'2", is just not getting it done these days, Hayden. No. Oh, that's going to get it done, though, from this kid. He's 6'2", he's using it to his full potential. Chafin heading to the free throw line and one opportunity. Another good display of battling through the contact and making adjustments. Clearfolk will take a timeout. Just be a 30-second timeout. First timeout of the opening half for Coach Tim Bradford. And again, want to hear from you out there in the fan zone. Keep dropping us some comment nuggets. Let's go ahead and read some of these right now. I see Caleb says, that's a foul call. The foul on the other end. Elijah didn't travel. Okay. Uh, Austin, same with Chafin. Josh Young says, no charges in Ohio. Aaron Brown disagrees. He says that's a charge. Austin came right back at him. Liddy. So some good back and forth going on right now in the YouTube. I'm Nick Yukis, says Go Tigers. Very official name there. Lawrence of Greece cheering on the TIs as well. As we're back down to a one-point game, 21-20 here, second quarter. Five and a half minutes to go inside less hot steam. Gymnasium. And the Tigers, defensive pressure has really ratcheted up. They're winning the turnover battle right now. I believe it's 6-3, to three, and they're going to take their first lead of the night. Cooper Kent, dot in the eye from straight away. Yeah, Brian, two-point lead now for Galleon, 23-21. Tigers have come roaring back. And the Colts no answer on this possession. Tigers continue to push it ahead from the elbow. Thought better of it, but they'll get a clean look from Miller. Too strong. And no deflection. Hots wanted that pass back. Yeah, that could have been a big possession to kind of calm you know, the momentum that is building on this Tigers sideline. Still just a two-point game, but that momentum scale has shifted a bit here with just under five minutes left in the half. Kent slowing things down. They'll initiate the offense here through the high post. Off the double screen, Fuzan. Wild shot into the hands of Pally Alt. Five on three here. They better get some points, right? Thank goodness they scared me a little bit. <laughs> you know, not necessarily showboat passing, but scare me a little bit, but they were able to convert. It was Mason Pipes. Puts him up at four points so far. Really balanced scoring for the Colts. As Skook comes away with the theft. And now Powie lets one fly. Tipped up. Offensive board collected here by Clear Fork. Baseline drive and traveling violation called on Garrett Hotz. So Clearfort gives it back over to the Tigers as we'll get a couple more substitutions, one on each side. All square midway through the second quarter. Two teams seeking their first win in Moak play, both 0-1 right now in the league. Could be a big confidence booster for either who comes out victorious in this one. Clean look. Kind of a late contest, but the Tigers, another offensive rebound. And they'll maintain possession. Last touch here by Clear Fork. Let's see if we can check it out. I mean, impossible to see right there <laughs> on that replay. Deep three from the lefty. Hart off target. Colts clear. Scoog pushing through the middle. Now looking to shred his way through the defense. Has to pick up.
Powie with the three. Off the front rim. And Caden Riddle just using the big body. Taking up some space there in the paint. Heading to the free throw line. Well, and Riddle has such a great presence in the post. Whether he's, you know, scoring or grabbing the rebounds, everything that he's doing down there is an important piece of their game because, you know, outside of him, they, they don't have a ton of size or height. I mean, Spencer's up there, um, but he's a great presence to have down in there as well as Dornbrier when he is in the game. Caden definitely the one true, you could say, center presence that they have on the roster. Second one, in and out. Jackson Hart on the hop. Now Tigers will swing it. Deep three. Ooh. Splash. Cooper Kent. You know, Coach Stover doesn't say he's probably the best shooter on the team for a reason. Showing off his range there on that one. Kent came into the night. 41% from downtown as we get an answer back at the other wind. Powie out now with four points. As that foul is going to be on the floor against Clear Fork, but it's going to be their seventh of the night. So we've got a one and one situation. Tigers heading to the free throw line. Pretty good free throw shooting team. And that's just deep sauce right there. Green light anytime when he's on the offensive side of the floor. Well, and hopefully the jinx won't come into play, but I just can't tell you how important it is. I sound like a broken record on broadcast a lot, but free throw shooting is a major difference maker at the high school level. You know, for whatever reason, I've been at practices, I know they practice it, but if you have a team that can shoot, you know, 70% and 75% or above from the line, you definitely give yourself a huge uh, additional plus going into any game. Knock down those two right there. They've got six free throw shooters on the team, Hayden, above 75%. Very good so far, though early on in the season. If you can keep that up, that's very impressive for a high school unit. It's going to be clear for ball here. Riddle gets it into Powie. Now looking to post up, Caden draws a crowd. Back inside, turns over that left shoulder and the soft touch. Really fought his way for that one at times, had three defenders on him. Great display on kind of an old school move. Contact's going to be on the shot, so two on the way here for Elijah Chafin. And it's going to go against Victor Skoog. What a ton of contact there. But it will lead to Elijah here, one of the captains, getting a couple opportunities. And he continues his sharp shooting here from the charity stripe. 19 of 21 on the season. The free throws have really allowed Galleon to stay in this game. They wouldn't be down drastically had they not had all these opportunities, but certainly probably would not be holding the lead if they haven't picked up as many fouls. Chafin now with a Baker's dozen. He's been great so far offensively. As the Tigers with a two-point cushion. Powie looking to tie, comes up short, gives up the body as he goes down to the floor. And it's going to pay off as Clear Fork got a couple of shots on the way here for Burkholder. Check this out from Powie. Just knifing his way around the back that time of Jacob Powers to make that whole thing happen. That kind of looked like he was going after a, a fumble out on the turf over at the football stadium outside, but great chance now, especially with just a minute before halftime, try and keep this one tied up. 
Milo, great rotation, hops out of the rim though. As Quinn Miller back out on the floor here for the Tigers. Stager taking a seat. Just 74 seconds remaining here in this opening frame. Tipped away here by Riddle. Great look inside. Burkholder. Get a chance at some redemption after missing those last two. Great job to apply some pressure, create the turnover, and still had numbers. Three guys down there for the guys in white. So, as you mentioned, a chance to right the wrongs of the last two free throws. Milo looking for his first points of the evening. And he does knock down the first. So Bergholder, two for two after missing his previous pair of attempts. Squares things up here at 30 each. Down to the final minute of action. Jumper off target. And losing the handle that time was Powell able to recollect before it went over the half court line. 40 seconds, a lot of time to try and burn against this scrappy defense for Galleon. So we'll see if they take an open look if they get a chance. Got to take that one. Riddle, they say the foul oh. on the floor. And that's just too much man to try to defend down there like that. You see he was able to get him on his back. Great seal called for the ball. And yeah, good call. Definitely draped all over him. Yeah, great call from the official there. In real time, those are the ones that are hard to pick up on, and you kind of feel like everything's happening at once, but definitely committed on the floor. But get the free throws since they're in the bonus. So one and one here for Caden. Earns the second. Riddle with five points so far in the contest. Looking for number six right here. So for Galleon, an opportunity if they want to hold for the final shot potentially of the second quarter. Doesn't look like they've got that same mindset. And now it'll be Clear Fork's opportunity. Yeah, approaching 10 seconds now. Big opportunity for them. Oh, great feed inside, in and out. Riddle. Now Burkholter wow. cleans up the mess. Shot at the horn, good if it goes too much. And we will head into the break with Clear Fork leading 34 to 30. Lots more still to come here on the OH Report, including a Mechanics Bank halftime. So stick around for that. We'll have some stats, analysis, maybe even peek in on our other live and free boys broadcast going on tonight. And of course, always, we'll get you set for the second half action, that's all on the way, live and free exclusively, right here on the OH Report.
have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. It's halftime here at the Clear Fork Corral, presented by Mechanics Bank. And we've got the mini Colts out at center court. Oh, they're going to get blocked here by Coach, but they're usually such a sight. I mean, they are 
awesome to watch at the boys' games, at the girls' games. They put in a lot of work, time, and effort. The ball handlers, and, and I like the, the colorful balls that they have here too, Hayden, watching these kids at halftime. This is what builds a solid program, having kids like that get invested, for sure. It is, and, and they do it well, and they do it right down here in Belleville, not only just in football, but in basketball and soccer. And as you mentioned, the mini Colts one of the highlights of the hardwood season down here in the Valley. So far, the highlights here for both sides. They've had a few. Clear Fork been dropping a couple of three-pointers. On the other side, the Tigers, they've had maybe some more fun-looking plays. They've had a couple of and ones, and they've been very, very sharp at the free throw line. Hayden, something that you talked about there in that second quarter. They can lead to victories just being pure in that aspect, that element of the game. It is, because look at our score here at halftime. It's a four-point game while they are trailing the Colts here right now. If it comes down to a situation with both teams in the bonus later on, that free throw shooting could come into play. Let's go ahead and take a look at our halftime stats presented by Mechanics Bank. Ah, that's better. 12 fill goals for the Colts, nine on the other side for Galley, and the threes are the same, but you look at the rebounds, hey, and it's a big cushion right now for Clear Fork, and another reason right now why they've got the lead. Yeah, what they haven't been able to do from the line, they've at least made up for by crashing the rebounds hard, getting second chance looks, and especially early on in that first quarter, uh, Galleon, you know, a little bit cold from the field, so Colts made a nice job and a nice effort of not allowing the Tigers to get too many second chance looks, so they'll need to continue to try and dominate inside, and, you know, they got to keep their foot on the gas pedal. Uh, a four-point deficit is, is something they're probably really proud of, but definitely not content with, so got to continue to build on it here in the second half. Clear Fork just 50% from the charity stripe, so look for those numbers if they're going to win to go up from here. As those are your halftime stats presented by Mechanics Bank. And do want to thank all of our generous sponsors for helping present tonight's contest live and free, including Spirion Mid-Ohio. Let them help you build the career that you want or the awesome team you want. They build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. Mechanics Bank, that's better. Park National Bank, where you mean more. And by MWD Logistics. Need a warehousing and logistics partner that gets your storage needs taken care of? Store and move your inventory seamlessly into your customers' hands with MWD Logistics. And you can't forget about Frito-Lay where it is always good fun. Delicious product too. I had a chance I was over at the Worcester plant last week oh, or two weeks ago and I brought yeah. back the chips they were fresh off of the conveyor belt you can't get fresher chips than that my wife devoured them and she was supposed to be on a fast that's how good the chips are that she gave up her diet to have those fresh chips yeah I remember actually when you brought those back those were delightful shout out to uh, Frito-Lay too for uh, having some gluten free options for your boy hey so on a, a non-chip note, do want to toss out there another Moax score. Shelby leading Harding 36-17 at the break. So another Moak game to keep an eye on. And I'm keeping an eye right now on our social medias, seeing what everyone's chit-chatting about out there in the Facebook and the YouTubes. See some back and forth going on here between the amateur history collector talking oh. to Vince. What else we got? Dustin saying let's go let's go Colts others talking about it raining threes out here and Lawrence understanding that rebounds are killing the Tigers they are GT shot comes up well short and it'll be out of bounds last touch by Galleon so clear fork with a four point cushion here and they've got the rock Opening 30 seconds of half number two. Pipes off the double team, gave it up. And now tipped out of bounds. Quick hands there by Elijah Chafin. Had an excellent first half. 12 points for him. Cooper Kent with 13. Those two combining for 25 of the 30 <laughs> Tigers points as Mason. 
with the pipes. I was going to say, it's going to be important for Clearport to come out how they did to open the game with that same confidence and swagger. So we'll see if Galleon will be able to match with their play towards the end of the first half. If so, we're in for a real treat of a finish. This one thrown away right in front of our GoPro camera. So it's going to be Colt basketball right at center court. I mean, we promised that we'd get you as close to the action as yeah. we can. We can't do much better than that, guys. As Alt shuffling the shoes before he put up that three-point attempt. It'll be the first turnover here of the second half for Galleon. Or by Clear Fork, rather. So both units with a giveaway. As Hart off the bounce, which is to the left hand, midair. Yeah, Jackson had no one else there, kind of at that second level. If we were using football terms, once he got past that first line, had a nice open lane to the hoop. And it's going to be back to back traveling violations against Powie Alt, the senior. Lost the handle this time. Check it out on the replay. Poked away, picked it up, and. I think you've got to take a dribble before you get those two steps. Okay. Still still in football mode there. <laughs> it's okay, though, because right now it's a turnover battle. Oh. Yeah, it is the season of giving as both teams offering up some healthy giveaways to start things off here in the third. Okay, that one was tipped. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I needed the instant replay to reassure me there. That ball definitely was tipped. So shout out to Superior Mid-Ohio, our replay sponsor, for helping me out. Riddle doing some work inside. Fall away. A little soft off the square. And it's ripped down by Jackson, pushing it ahead. What a pass to Chafin on the money. Great job. They do a really good job in transition, finding the open guy down the floor. And the turnover is piling up now for the Colts. As we see again on the replay, excellent look ahead, passing the gravy, and then putting it through the hoop that time for the Tigers to trim the deficit back down to a single possession. Chance to tie here if they were able to put up a trifecta or get three points the old-fashioned way. Off the double screen, this will tie it, and it does through the bottom. Well, and you just had a certain feeling that they were already looking for that triple to tie things up. Nice draw and play by Coach Stover. Eliza Chafin. Just 27% from beyond the arc entering tonight. He's got a couple of bombs on his resume here in this one as we'll get a timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout taken by Coach Tim Brafford in his first season here with Clear Fork. Looking for back-to-back -back wins here tonight after a victorious outing against Edison that ended a 27-game losing skid here for Clear Fork. That's right, folks, if you haven't been keeping up. It was a tough season last year for the Colts, 0-23. And, and looking to turn the page here. Fresh season, new coaching staff. A little bit different outlook and mentality. And I like a lot from what we've seen from this veteran Colts club so far. As you look up and down the roster, they just got one sophomore out there, and he's not even getting in the lineup. It's all juniors and seniors, Hayden. Yeah, you know, it, it, that makes it tough when you think about next year, but they're not thinking about that. They're thinking about this year right now, so a good mix of, you know, some upperclassmen that had that leadership and experience. Coast to coast, but it funnels off the rim there for Chief, and he gets it right back with the second effort. Tigers come all the way back here to take the lead. They were down seven just like two minutes ago. And Chafin's really coming to life. He had a little bit of a, you know, a rough going in the first quarter, but since then he's been lights out. Now the Tigers got numbers, looking to push. Open three, bottoms up from the corner. And Chafin, boy, he's got it rocking right now, up to 22, 10 points for him here in the frame. 
Good job of slowing the bleeding there by Mason Pipes. Much needed basket here for Clear Fork. Must have been an excellent halftime speech, I'd say, by Ryan Stover, getting the troops fired up, or maybe it was just Chafin deciding he was going to take matters into his own hands. He's pretty much doing all the damage right now, Hayden. Yeah, he's just come out here and he's just decided, you know what, he's just going to put his head down and ball, and, and he's been doing that exactly. Uh, Kent's had a great night as well with 13, but Chafin with 22 points, as you mentioned already, here with the still, you know, a quarter and a half left to play, so... Excited to see what he'll be able to rally his total up to. Clear Fork obviously wants to try and keep things close. So here's Kent. Entered the night as the third le leading scorer in all of the MOAC. Skoog shovels off. Here's Anderson dribbling his way out of the corner. Tigers looking to trap all over the place. They'll have to give up some open looks. And there's not one but two back to back. Mason Pipes hanging to midair. Goes good for two, back down to a three point deficit. As Chafin, good luck. The floater went 360 around the rim. Almost like a plunger right there. Yeah, tough break, and, you know, as someone commented, I believe in the section tonight, uh, you know, rebounding has been killing Galleon right now. Those are those last two possessions, one on defense, one on offense. Had a fantastic chance for an offensive board there, and then on the other side, they didn't even contest for a rebound, so allowing Clearfort to probably hang around a little bit closer than they'd like to. Riddle. Drew a crowd, gives it up. Here's the three from the corner. Second opportunity not there and poked out of bounds by the Tigers. Colts will get it back. And we do have a final score already at Upper Sandusky tonight. Sheesh. How about Columbian? 72 to 36. They double up the Rams. Can you believe it, Hayden? Upper Sandusky 0 and 4. Didn't even get to the free throw line tonight. Man, I'm not sure what's going on right now for those guys. We saw them early against Willard. Chafin gets another bucket, but just some Tough goings for them lately. Some stuff they got to get figured out. So after the leak out by Chafin, we'll get a foul here at the other end. It's going to go against Steger. And it'll be the second on him. Second team foul for the Tigers who check in Jacob Powers. Hart follows him back into the fold. And so Clear Fork going to match with a substitution of their own, Grant Spencer. Spencer with those three fouls, so that'll be at least something to keep an eye on here with 11 minutes to play. Spencer dishes it off to the corner. Now here's Powie, same spot. Creating his own dribble drive lane that time was Grant Spencer, fresh off the bench. Instantly turning into some offense. Just knifing his way through. Two, three defenders all in the vicinity. Three fouls now on Jackson Hart, who just picked up that last personal. So he'll check out of the game. And Spencer awaits his second opportunity here. Trying to get this back down to a single possession. Yeah, good chance, similar scenario as Galleon had in the second quarter. Clearfork gives themselves a chance from the line to stay close by, if not regain the lead before the fourth. Pure strength from Riddle just to get that shot up. But off the miss, here come the Tigers. Fusan, no one around him. He uncorks it. And skying for the rebound there is Kent. He's going to try one, two from deep. Ooh. And this time, he'll splash it home. I'm telling you, neither 
Chafin nor Kent have any hesitation to pull up from anywhere, you know, even steps beyond the Colt logo at midcourt. So Clear Fork's going to take a timeout before the shot there from Coach Bradford. As Tigers swinging the momentum pendulum in their favor. Huge third quarter for them. They trailed by a couple possessions here entering. And thanks to that gentleman right there, number two, Elijah Chafin, who's got double-digit scoring here in the second half, a dozen already to be approximate. He got the engine started, and the Tigers have continued to keep up the big offense. That shot from Pipes was a good answer that they needed, but just a little bit too much of this right now for Galleon. And they, you know, their confidence has really continued in from that second quarter to the third. And if they continue this level of play, you know, feeling pretty comfortable. But I know that this team can score in bunches and score quick. So Clear Fork wanted to take that time out here, trying to evaluate things, try and stop that bleeding before it gets too out of control here with a whole quarter left to play. Coach Stover wearing a big grin on his face out of that huddle, pleased obviously with what he's seen here from his squad in the third quarter. So we're approaching the two minute mark here before money time. Spencer with a nice up fake left hand, tough shot. And tipped into the hands of the Tigers, secured by Albert. Leading the charge, sets it up and quick shot from Kent Chafin, right place, right time off the back door. Was able to collect it and throw it off of a Colt. Yeah, a little bit of a heat check for Kent that time, but good heads up play by Chafin. Keep the ball on their end. That's why both of those juniors voted captains on this squad. Do more than just score great hustle players, but they definitely like to get up some volume shots from downtown. And no he's going to do it again. All right. 0 for 2 on this possession. Last touch there by Glue off of his fingertips. And it's going to be clear for basketball. Just shy here of midcourt. Clear Fork trailing by their largest margin of the night, and they'll give it back. Offensive foul against the Skoog. And that's his third. And that's big, you know. Now Spencer and Scoob, two starters, two key guys for this Colts squad in foul trouble. And Victor's going to check out right behind Milo Bergholder. Get our first look here at Adam Van Osdell. Did some big work in the JV victory for Clear Fork tonight. But a tough three raining down here from Albert. Largest lead of the night for either side. We're at double figures. Quick shot, back iron. Great fake. No splash, but the offensive rebounds starting to pile up here for Galleon. Colts did a phenomenal job keeping them off the glass in the first half. Third quarter has been a bit of a struggle for the Colts. Yeah, and you know, as many three-pointers as Galleon has been able to make, which has built that nice 10-point lead that they have, as you said, the volume of them is very high, so Clear Fork, they've got to realize the door is still being left open for them. I mean, Galleon's really comfortable just shooting the shoot, uh, but that leaves the opportunity for Clear Fork if they were able to get something going here offensively to keep it closer than 10. Rotation leads to the shot from the corner. No oh. way. 720 wow. around the rim pops out, but Garrett Hotz, a friend in a low place, coming up with a rebound and the score. You know, a huge grin on Spencer's face. That's all you can do. I, I think that's probably the closest basket I've seen that didn't go in this year. Nice job by Hotz, you know, coming through for his teammate. It was definitely like a snowboarding competition wow. when they do all those crazy spins and stuff. That ball just 
One rotation, two rotation. I think it even did maybe even more than two full rotations. Still leads to the same amount of points. Three points the old-fashioned way from Garrett Hotz. And that's going to be big. They need to cut that deficit down. And a chance now with the turnover. Chafin lost his footing off the leak out. Mason pipes racing the other way. And they trim the deficit in half just like that in 15 seconds. Big three on the way, too strong. Another opportunity here, kaboom! And that's gonna do it, I believe, for the third, maybe? Delay of game one. So Clear Fork's gonna get an opportunity here. So they're saying a Galleon player Maybe touch the ball out of the make. Let's see. It's on so Chafin. It's going on Chafin. Yeah, let's see. Another deep three. Knocks down. And yeah, I think that's the right call. Yeah. I don't think it was deliberate. Sure. I think he was trying to grab it, but nonetheless, we'll see. Deep pass Van Osdell into traffic, and that will take us to the end of the frame. Huge third quarter there by the Galleon Tigers as they head into the fourth with an eight-point cushion. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds, or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. A 25-13 Galleon Tiger explosion in the third, courtesy of five trifectas, has them in front by eight as Clear Fork. Trying to do some work from downtown, but they can't do it quite like Cooper Kent can from those long distances. And both he and Chafin right now basically keeping pace with the Colts, Hayden. Yeah, they've combined for 45, just too shy of what Clear Fork's put up as a team total. Ooh. So as you mentioned, looking like the Splash Brothers out here. 24 right now for Chafin, 21 for the other junior. As we get a foul, I think this will be a shooting foul with Garrett Hotz heading to the line. Doing some nice work inside. That's just a great feed as well from Spencer. Unfortunately, the Pipes wasn't able to convert. It definitely, the physicality Still at a high level here in this game. Just an eight-point deficit. Could be cut to six if he's able to knock down both free throws. Scoob back into the fold. Two substitutions here for the Tigers. Get another look at Glue along with Jackson Hart. Hots to split the pair, and he'll miss them both. Jump ball on the floor will belong to Galleon. Update, <clears throat> update from Shelby. They lead Harding 57-38 going into the fourth quarter. And Shelby the three-time defending MOAC champions. I think they've got a great opportunity for a four-peat this year. 
Yeah, they return a lot of talent. Uh, did lose some to graduation, but you have guys like Isaiah Ramsey and Alex Bruscott are back. So would be really excited to watch Galleon square off with them. I think two teams that their tempo would really, you know, provide an entertaining matchup. That's a one-man tempo push right there from Spencer. Going end-to-end. -end. And it looks like right now, Galleon, they're in a flow. They found a rhythm offensively where they're just having fun right now, Hayden. And everything seems to be just working as it should. They're finding teammates. Wasn't a great start for them at the beginning of the game. They've certainly got things figured out with a big 25-point quarter. Well, and that's the key to, you know, a good team with good leadership from top to bottom. You know, how are you going to respond when you come out, especially on the road in a tough environment, and you're not playing the game you know you're capable of, and, and they've totally flipped the switch. Chafin dashing his way down the lane. Clear Fork with an opportunity to press here with some numbers. As Van Osdel, skip pass, picked off. Elijah into the passing lane and looking to slow things down now. Chafin had it poked away, ripped there by Hots. Sends it forward, Skoog with an up fake. And he's got the layup from the block. Back down to a six point lead here for the Tigers. That one was big, smart move by Skoog to give the little fake, then took his time. Little drafts comes through. Missing that one, but off the second opportunity, it's Chafin. Three more for him. Timeout, Tigers. And I'm telling you, that play could end up being a lot larger than maybe people are understanding right now. 5.54 to play. That's the difference between going down, try and cut it to a four-point game, but now back up to a nine-point advantage. So I'm hearing that we've got a double foul right now on Victor Skoog and then Max Albert. So that's going to be the fourth on Victor. Six team fouls for the Tigers could be key as Clear Fork's just one away from getting into the bonus. And they might have to try to Claw their way back into this game here tonight by getting to the charity stripe. Continue to attack, be aggressive, and knock down your free throws. Something they weren't great at in the first half, just 50%. Yeah, they'll need to try that here in the fourth quarter. Only two minutes in, but definitely don't want to let Galleon just run the floor. Try and use the six fouls they've committed so far to your advantage. Going straight to work off the check-in here. It's Dornbeer. And he just recognized he had the size advantage. Went straight to the middle of the lane. It's a jump ball call, though. So no free throws. And Powie's going to get fouled. Chafin thought that he... Had a clean sweep there. Was going to be heading the other way for an easy two. Take a look on the Spherion Mid-Ohio replay. Definitely getting a little piece of the body. A lot of ball, too. It's the second foul for Elijah here on the evening. And as I was mentioning, with Clear Four getting to the bonus this quickly now, 5.41 to go, this is really how they can make their hay and get back into the contest. Just being good at the charity stripe, and so far so good here for Powie All. Looking for point number six here on the second offering. And I'll knock it down, two for two that time by the senior. Well, and I think we've figured out if you're Galleon who you don't want to send to the line, but if you're Clear Fork, you know, encourage Powie to really drive and get aggressive and try and pick those up because he's definitely gone to the line with the most ease. And this is the best case scenario here for Clear Fork. A little time coming off the clock and you're going to get Dornbeer heading down the other way. He's going to be at the free throw line and a chance to impress Ron the Shark down here at this other end. 
Still got five minutes, 30 seconds. To try to rally his team. You know, I almost, uh, I've neglected Ron the Shark. Forgot he was over there. Yeah, Ron trying to make an impact right now. Can't do it, but an offensive rebound, a miss. Second time, not the charm. Will it be the third always? Wow. Dorn Beer cleaning up the mess. Lucky to come away with that one. It seemed like nothing was going to fall. Now back down to a five point game. Oh, sick look backside in and out from Glue. Kent was able to find him leaking undefended. Now here's Powie from outside. Can't convert. Loose ball foul against Clear Fork. And that'll be their fifth. You can tell that one was a little bit wide when it came off of Powie's hands, especially from that angle. But I like the look. Had a chance to cut it to two. So Chafin walks it across the timeline. He'll initiate the offense through Kent and instantly puts it up. Athletic move that time by Albert. Thought he was going to be able to tip it to himself. Check this out one more time on the Spirion Mid-Ohio replay. Whoop! Yeah, definitely did try and use the reach and the wingspan. Almost worked. Clear Fork's going to burn a T.O. Coach Bradford. Going to talk things over with his guys. In for a fun finish here tonight at the Colt Corral. 4.47 to go. Just a five-point game. MOAC action. Galleon looking for their second win of the season. Clear Fork trying to collect their second dub of the week. And both looking to get in the win column. In conference play, I'm Brian Skronsky. Hayden Gray is with me here tonight. Double duty for my guy running the camera. Also dropping some color commentary nuggets on you. And coming up tomorrow night, we've got some great coverage all over the place. You arguably have the most exciting game of the night, Hayden. Ashland, the Arrows, not off to a great start, but they're going to be at Lexington. The Minutemen, a big favorite to win the OCC. We'll also have live and free coverage of East Knox at home against Northmore in boys' hoops action. Worcester will be taking on Mansfield Senior. I have Greg Collins on the call on that one, along with Brian Harder. And then myself and Travis Berardi be right back here at the Corral. It basically, it's just Clear Fork Week. The ladies going to be playing Ontario in a big MOAC contest. And Ontario just cutting their coach loose today, so... Going to be a lot of emotions for that one as Chafin gets the pass. And able to sneak it through there for two more. Approaching the 30 mark. You know, Brian, I was, I was going to bring up there a lot of action for us tomorrow night. And you're right, you know, I definitely cannot complain. My first chance getting over to the new gymnasium in Lexington. First chance to see the team we've all been hearing the buzz about, so excited to see them in a conference battle tomorrow. And Ashland, too, the defending OCC yeah. champions. They graduated Luke Dembo and Georgievic, their leading rebounder. A lot of pieces return, even though they're off to, I think they're 0-3 right now. That's a team to keep an eye on that as the season progresses, probably going to start finding their flow as Clear Fork doing that here from the free throw line. And that was kind of my recipe for them to get back into the game. Doing their part right now at this point as Chafin misses that one with a full head of steam into the paint. But able just to rip it back. And this kid doing it all over the place. He's got 29 points, Hayden. But check this out. Just going over the top. Taking it away from Hots. Creating an extra possession. Those are the plays sometimes that add up at the night to a victorious evening. Yeah, man, it's just pure passion and effort out of this kid every time he touched the ball. Took an iffy fall there, but good to see him get back up. And now Spencer going to be bumped, and that's the 10th foul. Double bonus time for Clear Fork from here on out. Just past the midway point here of quarter number four. And also foul number four here on Seth Steger. Yeah, this is really going to test the, the discipline of the Tigers. 
uh, which may not always be a bad thing, but now two uh, for sure free throws every time they commit a foul. And with the aggressive defense that the Tigers have been playing, you see that a lot of these bumps, they're coming not in the lane, not even on the perimeter, far away from the basket, and it's allowed Clear Fork to just slowly climb their way right back into this as this shot will make it a one-score game. Yeah, I mean, I, if less than two minutes ago we were sitting here with a you know a seven to ten point advantage for Galleon, it seemed like they were going to kind of cruise off into the night, but now just one possession and big chance for Clearfort to get a stop. Can off the handoff to Chafin, switches to his right, scoop shot back iron, fouled though in the process, and Elijah heading to the free throw line and. I think a great nugget by our director. He pointed out that Chafin, along with Kent, they've shot so many deep threes tonight. It's pulling the defense away from the basket, and it's kind of opening things up similarly to play action in football, Hayden, where the the threes are now setting up the lane and getting inside for some twos. Sure, yeah, that's a great observation. And, you know, they got a lot of explosion off that one, two step. So guys like Chafin have been able to kind of give you a little fake and then drive in with not much pressure. She knocks down both free throws. Continues to be the best free throw shooter on the team. Well over 90% now as he's perfect in this contest. Hesitation that time from Spencer. Now looking to go to work, backing his way in. And pipes from the backside. That's what Toronto double team will do, open things up for the rebound and the putback. And that's, you know, multiple times Mason has done that tonight, and that can be very helpful for them because, you know, Spencer had a, a look, and I think he liked his matchup, but wasn't able to get it to fall pipes with the putback. Double team forcing down here on the block. Albert has to kick it out, but it's a deep three buried. Huge shot that time from Kent. I mean, he loves that spot on the floor. I think that's the third one from probably a five-foot radius over there. Give him 24 points for the evening. Colts crashing the boards relentlessly. But a foot out of bounds that time for Pipes. One more time as you see Cooper Kent stick the landing. Huge shot for him. Clear Fork had some momentum flowing in their favor. And that's how the three-point arc has really just changed the game as Riddle being forced out here. Garden Cooper Kent. That's not a favorable matchup for the Colts here. Tiger step into another open look and the coach Coach Stover was like, dude, we're just trying to burn time. A little bit frustrated with that one, but it's so hard when you've got a wide open look like you just saw from Albert. As that one more contested. And it'll go out of bounds off the long carom. So back over to Galleon. And a foul, actually. On the loose ball scramble. And that'll be the seventh. So it should be a one and one here for the Tigers. Discussion right now amongst the referees. I think it was a loose ball foul, so it should be a defensive foul. Oh, looks like they're gonna keep it down. Galleon will take possession, but. So Coach Stover gets an explanation. And the Tigers reclaim the basketball. Up six, sub two minutes to go here. Been a fun Ooh. game here at the Cole Corral. As Clear Fork comes up with the thefts, much needed, trailing by a couple of scores. That's a huge possession for them, 130 left in the game, down seven. You can tell definitely they're looking inside to riddle Love for him to take advantage of the size mismatch he's got in there. And he's able to collect the missed ball and go to work. Two free throws on the way here for Caden. 
Came really close to being a three-point play. Don't know if they would have called the foul on the floor or not, but that risky pass, man. Big opportunity for the Colts. They got to knock down, you know, both of these to try and put themselves in a competitive position. Big free throw knocked down by Riddle. We'll have one more. Second one, back iron. Rebound here by Cooper Kent. Always pushing the pace. Coach Stover telling him to slow down a bit like he mentioned last time. No need to push the tempo here. Chafin though, tough shot. Hey. Left hand. Coach Stover thought there was a little bit of contact perhaps. No whistle ever came. And so now Clear Fork down by five in much need of a basket. Tough contested shot right there. Timeout taken by Galleon after Kent was able to track it down. And pretty simple, I'm sure, the message in the Galleon huddle. Don't need a shot. Make them come to us. Time is on our side right now. Yeah, absolutely not. They want to try and force Clear Fork's hand, make them foul here. And Clear Fork... You know, you know got to remember, you don't have to, you know, force up three-pointers. They've knocked some down tonight, but remember that inside game and the double bonus still in effect for you. I really think, you know, Pally has shown that he can be really dangerous from the free throw line. He's got that explosion, so be interesting to see if they'll try and have him be aggressive, try and go inside, drive to the bucket. Tigers basically right at their scoring average for the season. And they've got all the making of an exciting team. Don't have a ton of size inside. They shoot it well from beyond the arc. And a lot of kids, they just have that confidence about them that they'll hit from anywhere in the gym. So it's been fun to watch them so far here in this one. And Clear Fork definitely showing a lot of fight. Got off to an excellent start here in this one. Third quarter has been their Achilles Hill. They were outscored by a dozen. But they've got themselves back into it here. And the quick foul is going to send Stephen Glue to the line here for a one and one. It'll be Mason Pipes with the personal, his third, eighth on the Colts. So they'll have one more foul in the one and one before it goes to the double bonus for both sides. You know, the Colts did try and press there for a little bit, gave it some time, but obviously didn't want to allow too much to tick away. And it pays off. Oh, Riddle off the shovel pass, gave it away, but right back at you. Galleon re-gifts the turnover. And look at this sequence. Almost looked like disaster there from Riddle. And what should have been probably an easy two if they could just connect on that pass with Chafin right down on the block instead. It's going to be Clear Fork back with the rock and still very much alive. 43.7 ticks, five-point game. Each passing possession becomes more crucial and critical. Got to get points here, I think, Mr. Gray. No question. Yeah, you know, I think obviously everyone's going to want to go down and get a three, but you're definitely in need of two. No question about it. So I think try and make an aggressive play with still 43 seconds left. Clear Forks out of timeouts. Galleon still got a pair. Saw Lucas, athletic director and head coach Taylor Iceman in here getting a little scouting in. Oh, is he? So they just exited the building, but they've seen enough. Had a chance to watch their boys team practice yesterday. They definitely, I tell you what, they were on an intense practice. Yeah, Taylor does an awesome job yeah. with that program, always has. He's a no BS kind of guy. Love that about him, and the kids just love him to pieces. Ooh. Skoog had it halfway home. 
Right back to him, the kick out. This one on the way from Spencer, it's short. Wild shot into the hands of Riddle. Man, how oh. many opportunities can they get? Not another one, not on this possession. Chaos. That, and that'll basically all but end things. As Kent picks it up, Tigers take a timeout with just six seconds showing. But what a gut-wrenching possession. Man, Clear Fork, I think they had, what, five shot attempts there. Three looks at three, a couple on the interior, and just nothing would fall. And I get it, you know, Spencer was doing anything he could, try and sell that one there, pick up a foul, and th that one really hurts. You know Riddle would do anything he could to, you know, have that opportunity back. Can't close the door completely, but as you mentioned, Brian, under six and a half seconds left. Yeah, that miss by Riddle on the inside, I believe there was about 16 seconds still showing. So that was a tough one. Now, you're almost into miracle category status if you're clear fork in terms of overcoming a five point differential and you don't have the ball with six seconds. So we'll see if they can get a little bit of a Christmas miracle here early on in the Christmas season. Tigers would just love the gift of a Moak victory and looks like they're gonna get it and be able to dribble it out here with Miller as the Tigers come back from a halftime deficit. Huge explosion in the third and they win it here 67-62. Getting above 500 now at 2-1 and one on the season. We'll take a quick time out. We'll be back with your Mechanics Bank post-game show that will include an interview with our Park National Bank MVP. That's all on the other side. Keep it here. We'll be back, as always, live and free. better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Wonderful time of the year When you got your lays that don't last many days Cause the whole family's here, oh wow It's the most wonderful time of the year It's the hap happiest season of all The tree's at an angle, the lights are all tangled Doritos, good call! The happiest season of all. There'll be smart food for munching, some ruffles for crunching, and snowball fights out in the snow. <laughs> Crying! 
<laughs> Run. <laughs> Family portraits are cheesy with Cheetos. It's easy. White shirts were a bad idea, though. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Grab the queso and salsa. Don't double dip, you monster! <laughs> Pass the Tostitos here. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be gifts for returning and recipes burning and snacks all laid out in a row. We'll smile through the season, hold tight to the reasons the holidays make our hearts glow. It's the most wonderful time. Yes, the most wonderful time. Oh, the most wonderful time of the year. Happy holidays! Happy holidays!
Back now with our player of the game presented by Park National Bank. I've got the junior sharpshooter with me right now, Elijah Chafin. 31 points from you and dropping some bombs here tonight as well. Let's start with that third quarter where you guys really made that push. You outscored them 25-13, to 13, I believe, in the frame. What was said at halftime and then what inspired you guys out on the floor? You know, Coach got on our butts, you know. Uh, we knew we needed a defense to stop, so it was an offensive transition. And we knew we should not be giving up rebounds as much. You know, last week was tough. It, we just got out rebound a lot, and we should have done that. And this this game, we knew we needed a big big one. Uh, you and your teammate Cooper Kent, basically, it looks like you got the green light from wherever. Is that the case where Coach just believes in your guys' ability that you can just kind of pick and choose when to get aggressive offensively? Yeah, Coach believes in all of us, not just us two. He believes in all of us. He knows that we all can shoot, and we all know that we can shoot. So, you know. If we're open, we're going to make it. Yeah, I believe you two combined for seven made three-pointers tonight. Maybe it was even eight. Your ability to shoot from long range, how much do you feel like over the course of the night that opens up things in the paint where you're able to then start finding some lanes? Oh, it opens up a lot, you know, if you're able to shoot wherever you want on the floor. It, it does open up for me and other players. So you guys get your first uh, MOAC win of the season here. You're one and one, get above 500. Tell me about some of the expectations for this team coming in. Obviously, you got a few really exciting players on the roster. You know, it, it is it is awesome. It's amazing, you know, seeing everybody else, you know, doing their thing. So it's actually really nice. Did you guys feel like you would be in the mix as one of the top teams in the MOAC preseason? Oh, definitely, definitely. So as far as your expectations up to this point in the year, where would you say you are and where where do you want to go in terms of uh, maybe improving and getting to the level that you guys are wanting to set for that standard? You know, we're, we're top five for sure. You know, we're capable of being top three for sure. You know, uh, Mayor and Harding is good, but we'll see him again, so we'll prove him wrong. All right, Elijah Chafin, our Park National Bank MVP. If you want to take a moment, look into that camera, give a shout out to anybody that's watching. Now's your time. Shout out to my mom who isn't here. Always a good idea to give a shout out to mom. Appreciate the time, Elijah. Continued success to you. Looking forward to watching your Tigers and how you develop throughout the course of the season. Thank you. 31 big points there for our MVP, knocking down four three pointers as well. Elijah Chafin, huge night for him. Really exciting to see that backcourt play. That one two combo that they have, both he and Kent, it was so much fun to watch and really enjoyed. Those two in particular as Coach Stover walking off the floor with his stud shooting guard. Man, what, what a performance by, 